بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد إن شاء الله to continue with the book of Ibn Qayyim رحمه الله الداء والدواء the sickness and the cure um, last week we had gone over some of the evil effects of the, the sins and how they can destroy the heart, the body in this world and the next world. We mentioned Hirman al ilm being prevented from beneficial knowledge is one of the signs of uh, the, the, the sins upon a person. And it's a very dangerous sign to be prohibited or prevented from seeking the knowledge of the deen, of knowing what's halal and haram, um, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves or hates. So if somebody finds himself being prevented from, from knowledge, they should, you know, take account of themselves and, and find out why. And also we mentioned the stories of some of the Salaf, how if they had do s- a small sin, it would affect their memory. And we said like Imam al-Shafi, rahimahullah, how he had a photographic memory. He could read a page once and memorize it. And if he fell into sin, you know, that small sin that we said, he might have seen the calf of a woman and it affected his memory. Or uh, just pondering upon the Salaf in general, how they had, mashallah, so much taqwa, their memory and their ilm and their uh, you know, uh, capabilities of learning was so high. Like Imam al-Zuhri was said that he can hear something once and memorize it. So as he walked through the streets, he would be very careful to you know, cover his ears sometimes because he didn't want to hear stuff and had it stick in his mind, afraid to have you know, evil effects and, 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 and affect his knowledge of Islam. So we also talked about Hirman uh, al-Rizq, that uh, sinfulness can prevent somebody from attaining provisions. And al-Wahsha, the loneliness or anxiety one feels in their heart between themselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when the person falls into sins, uh, often they start getting that type of anxiety or ill feeling in their hearts between them and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, wahsha to bain nas like having that type of anxiety or feeling between them and the people, especially the believers. They won't feel comfortable being around the believers. They won't be, feel comfortable being about around others who are good, because the sin is taking over them. Also, we talked about ta'sir um, umurihi from the evil effects of the sin of the sins is making their affairs hard upon them. They'll find problems in their life that they didn't find before. Like we said, the some of the salaf said that they can see this the ill effect of sin in their riding beast or even in their wife or their family when they come home. That's how in tune they were with themselves. Also, al-dhulma, the, the darkness that one finds from committing sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes places a darkness upon one's uh, face and one's mannerisms because of the sins that he keeps or she keeps falling into. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ الْمَعَاصِي تُوهِنَ الْقَلْبِ وَالْبَدْنِ That the, the sinfulness weakens the heart and it actually physically weakens the body. And I think we stopped on the hirman uh, al from the sinfulness, uh, the evil effects of sins is that one is being prevented from doing good deeds. The more one falls into sin, the, the harder it becomes for them to do good deeds. And this is a serious punishment. So if we see, like inshallah we're going to go into the other ones as well, but just to keep in mind, if you see some of these evil effects in yourself, one of them or some of them, or you know, may Allah prevent all of them, that's a, s- a mercy from Allah in a sense because He's given you, you, at least you're able to see it. When people get too deep into sin sometimes, like we'll learn maybe tonight or the next uh, dars, they, they are unable to see this, these evil effects. So sin becomes normal for them. So this is a rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give you like a, a warning to basically check yourself do a review of yourself, find out what am I doing wrong, what sin am I falling into, so you can inshallah take advantage of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy before it's too late. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ الْمَعَاصِي تَقْصِرُ الْعُمْرِ وَتَمْحَقْ بَرَكَتُهُ وَلَا بُدَّ فِنَّ الْبِرَّ كَمَا يَزِيدُ فِي الْعُمْرِ فَالْفُجُورُ يَقْصِرُ الْعُمْرِ And he says that from the evil effects of ma'asi, sinfulness is that it, uh, it decreases the lifespan of somebody and it erases their blessings. And this is uh, a reality just as righteousness will increase somebody's uh, lifespan and increase their barakah or their blessings. And the people, they differed into, uh, uh, upon this statement. 
وقال طائفة النقصان العمر العاصي هو ذهاب بركة عمره ومحقها عليه وهذا حق وهو بعد تأثير المعاصي So some that say that the evil effects of sinfulness is that it will take away the blessing of the life so not the actual uh, lifespan, but the blessing of the life. وقال طائفة بل تنقص حقيقة. Another uh, group says no, it actually literally decreases the lifespan of a person. You know, just like the Prophet said that if you do good deeds, it increases your lifespan and it increases your 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 rizq, your baraka. Sinfulness can actually physically decrease your lifespan and decrease physically decrease your provisions. And of course, this is all in the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both were written. Like it was written that, you know, if you would do such and such thing, you, you would live to this point. But if you did such and such, then you would, your life would be less. For example, if you did fell into sins and more sins. Or if you did, it was written that if you would live such and such, if you did such and such good deeds. So this is, part, this is one group of scholars say that it's, it's literally like your lifespan has decreased. And the third party says, تأثير المعاصي في محق العمر إنما هو بأن حقيقة الحياة هي حياة القلب ولهذا جعل الله سبحانه الكافر ميتا غير حي كما قال تعالى أموات غير أحياء So a third party say that um, the effects of the sinfulness is taking away in taking away the lifespan is like the true lifespan of a person because the true lifespan of a person is in the lifespan of the heart in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything else is not considered real life because he says uh, the ayat quoting the ayat amwatun ghayru ahya the non believers are dead not alive so true life is obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything else in your life is not counted for for so that's what they're saying literally every time you don't do good and every time you fall into evil you're decreasing your lifespan so everything from the day you're born until the day you die according to this group of this scholars is um, counted for you in the good deeds that you do. Everything else is a waste of life. So in this sense, increasing in sinfulness is wasting your life. فالحيات في الحقيقة حياة القلب وعمر الإنسان مدد حياته فليس عمره إلا أوقات من حياته حياته بالله عز وجل فتلك ساعات عمره فالبر والتقى والطاعة تزيد في هذه الأوقات التي هي حقيقة عمره so he's saying that basically the life of a person is in the life of the heart and his righteousness and taqwa and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase in this time. So the more goodness you do with this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with in your life, the more uh, righteousness you have, the more your life will count for. وَبِالْجُمْنَ فِي الْعَبْدُ إِذَا عَرَضَ عَنَ اللَّهِ وَاشْتَغَلَ بِالْمَعَاسِ ضَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ أَيَّامُ حَيَاتِهِ الْحَقِيقَةِ أَلَّتِي يَجِدْ غِبْ إِضَاعَتِهَا يَوْمَ يَقُولْ Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. He says to summarize that the servant who turns away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gets occupied with sinfulness has lost the days of his life, his true life. And that will be on the day of judgment the major regret when he comes and he says, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. I wish that I had put forth for my life. Because every single second that passes that you haven't been obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or doing good deeds, we will regret it on the day of judgment. Every single second that we lost, you know, whether it's doing sinfulness or just wasting time, we'll regret it when we go in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll say, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. I wish we put more forth more for my life, meaning the good deeds. And subhanAllah, when we think about how short life really is, it's truly a loss. You know, if you think yawm and awba al yawm, a day or part of a day, ashiyan aw dhuhaha, like an uh, evening or, 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 or a morning. That your whole life is going to feel like one evening or one morning or one part of the day. And we couldn't be patient enough to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this short, short time. How much will we regret on the day of judgment when we face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Um, just to pause, if anybody ponders, you know, why do we sin? Like when we see all these evil effects, to think about it, why do you think we sin or why do we fall into sin? Following desires is one of the reasons correct. Yes. Right. Not having the the taqwa to to realize 
the bigger picture and just taking the immediate ladda or shahwat. That's true. That's actually one of the worst forms of sin as we're going to cover that too, subhanAllah. But uh, the scholars, they've put together five main reasons that, um, that are causes for sin. So like we're going through Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, he's telling us the evil effects of sin. So the way to prevent ourselves, inshallah, from falling into sin or continuing in sin is to take account of ourselves. One way to do that is by pondering upon the evil effects of sins. Like when we see all these punishments and these um, you know, downside of falling into sin, it will help us to prevent it. Another way to help us prevent us to help prevent us from falling into sin is to ponder upon like why we sin in, 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 in the first place. So you can analyze where that sin is coming from and try to prevent it or cut it at its root. So the scholars they've put together took you know basically five main reasons why people fall into sin. Uh, the first one they say is the weakness of faith or lack of taqwa. So da'fu al-iman or da'fu taqwa when your iman is low and decreased, that's easier for a person to fall into sin. The second one is ignorance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ignorance of His asma' wa sifat or ignorance of His uh, commands and prohibitions. Al-awamr wa nawahi When a person is ignorant of Allah's names and attributes, for example, He is as sami' al-basir. He is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. He hears everything we say. When we forget that, we start saying or using our tongues for things we should not be using it for or looking with our eyes at things we should not be seeing or walking or being in places we shouldn't be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we forget Allah is watching us right or ignorant of his commands and his prohibitions if you don't know something is halal or haram you may fall into doing the haram and staying away from the wajibat or the obligatory deeds so ignorance is the second uh, main reason people fall into sin the third one we discussed before is taking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and forbearance for granted and feeling safe from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. You know, when people, like the common excuse is, oh, Allah ghafoor rahim, you know, husn al billah, and they're doing all types of evil, evil, evil deeds. This is uh, one of the uh, ways that people fall into sin easily because they're not, they're taking for granted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. We went through that whole chapter before that if you don't uh, do the things that require or earn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, then you're not befitting of it. And you may fall into the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taking his uh, mercy and forbearance hilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being feeling safe from his punishment and makr. And the fourth we also mentioned before is keeping bad company. You know, when you're around people, evil people or bad company or people that don't encourage you with good, it's easier for yourself to fall into sin. You know, the more you surround yourself with, with people that don't respect Allah Azza wa Jal or follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the more you will act like those people and it's easier for you to fall into sin. If they're all doing it around you, it's easy for you to fall into that same mistake. And number five, like we mentioned, is the increased following of shahawat or shubuhat. Shubuhat is having uh, doubts in the deen to the point that the shaitan tricks the person to commit major acts of evil because he forgets that he's going to go to be taken to account on the day of judgment or he thinks it's just something make believe you know when you have rayb or shak in your iman that's the opposite of yaqeen and that leads to falling into evilness easily or shahawat the desires the lower desires the temptations following those so those are the f five main uh, reasons the scholars say that people fall into sins and once uh, uh, a continuous sin could have more than one reason for it. So if we find ourselves, we see some of these signs in us that we're being prevented from some of the, you know, for example, beneficial knowledge, or we see that we're feeling anxiety, or we see that we're having problems with our families, or we see that we're having problems with our friends, or we feel like a darkness or a loneliness, then go back and check yourself and see like, where is it coming from? What sin am I doing? Then you find out how is that sin originating? So you can cut the sin from the root, inshallah. Right, and so these are the reasons that cause a sin. You want to do the opposite of it. If it's weakness of faith that's causing you, like you're not really taking the serious the account of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, al Qiyamah and facing Him and being judged, then start thinking about what the purpose of life is and where we're going to go and how we're going to face Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Ponder upon that so you can increase your man and it becomes 
uh, more difficult for you to follow and to sin and more easy for you to do the good deeds that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil effects of sins is tawalid al-ma'asi wa minha anna al-ma'asi tazra' amthaluha wa yulid ba'duha ba'dan hatta ya'azzu ala al-abdi mfariqatuha wal khuruj minha so sinfulness leads to other sins to the point where a servant he will do a sin and get so used to it that it's hard for him to leave that sin kama qala ba'd as-salafi inna min uqubati as-sayyi'a sayyi'ata ba'daha from the punishments of the sinfulness is to continue and do more sins. So one of the punishments of falling into sin is to do more sins. It's like a, an evil circle that, that, can, that, that will spiral you down into the abyss. May Allah protect us from that. وَإِنَّ مِنْ ثَوَابِ الْحَسَنَةِ الْحَسَنَةُ بَعْدَهَا And from the blessings and barakah of the good deeds is to do more good deeds after it. فَالْعَبْدُ إِذَا عَمَلَ حَسَنَةً قَالَتْ أُخْرَى إِلَىٰ جَنْبِهَا أَعَمَلْنِي أَيْضًا فَإِذَا عَمَلَهَا قَالَتْ الثَالِثَ كَذَلِكَ وَهَلُّمْ مَجَرًّا فَتَضَاعَفْ الْرِبْحُ وَتَزَايَدَتْ الْحَسَنَاتِ So when a person does a hasana, it says that another hasana will call that servant, come here and do me too, <laughs> do another good deed. And then a third one will come and say, oh come and, 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 and help do me as well. Like this hasanat encourages other hasanat until it increases and increases upon you and uh, leads to a great success and a great uh, ribah like um, how would you translate ribah gain a great gain on the day of judgment in dunya and akhirah and also the sayyat is the opposite when you start doing sinfulness the other sins call you to come do them as well until it gets worse and worse and worse and we said before how too much sin can lead to the ran al-qulub, the, the sealing of the heart, the rusting of the heart. And that was one of the most serious and, and, and deadly effects of sins when your heart is sealed and then you have no shame among Allah Azza wa to do the sinfulness. You don't have any fear anymore of doing the sinfulness. Your heart becomes sealed and you fall into the kufr. And then we said the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those whose hearts are sealed, wujuh, uh, they will, they will, they will uh, be prevented from seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will have the seal upon their heart from what they used to deny. Right? They will be like, have a, a barrier between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the worst of the punishments. So the more one does the good deeds, it becomes like a habit and easier for you to do the other good deeds. And the more difficult it is for you to leave those good deeds. So for example, like if you're used to praying Qiyam al-Layl, right, you do it every single night. If you miss it just one night, you feel like you're missing out on something, like something is, 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 is missing, like you really, f you feel bad, you know, that you, you miss something like that. Or if you have a hizb of the Qur'an that you read, a certain amount of Qur'an you read every day, and you miss that certain portion of the day, you feel bad because you're used to doing it all the time. Or if you fast a certain, you know, day of the week or a certain time of the month, you know, and then you miss it. Because your, 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 your good deeds become a habit for you to the point that you actually love it. And if you miss it for some reason, it's like you're missing something in life. Right? And the same thing with the bad deeds. A'udhu Billah, may Allah protect us from that. When a person continues to do a bad deeds, it becomes a part of their life and a habit. So if they miss the bad deeds, they miss that. Like the believer and the mu'min and the, the muttaqin, they miss the good deeds. The evildoers, they start missing the bad deeds. They become so attached to the bad deeds that they can't part with it. And that's a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be very careful of what you form as habits. Like one of the poets, he says, فَكَانَتْ دَوَائِ وَهِيَ دَاءُ بِعَيْنِهِ كَمَا يَتَدَاوِي شَارِبُ الْخَمْرِ بِالْخَمْرِ He says that the, like the sickness was the medicine for me. You know, basically the sinfulness, he, he keeps doing more sin and more sin. Like the, the drunkard tries to seek, you know, a cure for his drunkenness with more wine. That's how the, the poet is saying, basically drawing an analogy for a person who falls into sin continuously, like his, his medicine for, for sin is more sin until he becomes, his heart becomes sealed. May Allah protect us from that. So he said that a person or a servant will continue to do the good deeds 
until he loves them or they become beloved to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send him an angel or he will send him angels to encourage him to do these good deeds to the point that he will even get him up from his, um, f- from his bed so he can get up and do extra good deeds. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when a servant does the good deeds and he becomes beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah, he will send his angels to be a helper for this person. And the opposite is true with the bad deeds. If a person continues to do the bad deeds, وَلَا يَزَالُوا يَأْلِفُ الْبِالْمَعَاسِ وَيُحِبُّهَا وَيُثِيرُهَا عَتَّى يَرْسُلُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ شَيَاطِينَ فَتَعُزُّوا إِلَيْهِ أَزَّى That a person will continue to do the sinfulness and the evilness until he starts loving the evilness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send upon him shayateen, devils from the ins and the jinn that will encourage him in his sinfulness and he will increase in it. So be very careful. Like a small sin can lead to greater sins. You know, cut it off at its roots before it's too late. And increase in the good deeds. If you have something good, continue to do it. Like the Prophet said, The most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones that are continuous, even if it's little bit. If you have something good that you do between you and Allah azza wa jal, continue in doing it. Don't leave it. Don't look down upon any small deed, because it could be that one good deed that saves you from the hellfire. It could be that one good deed that gets you into paradise. And inshallah build upon it and continue to get progress and get better and better. وَمِنْهَا وَهُوَ مِنْ أَخْوَفِهَا عَلَى الْعَبْدِ أَنْهَا تَضْعَفِ الْقَلْبِ عَنْ إِرَادَتِهِ فَالتَّقْوَى إِرَادَةِ الْمَعَاسِ وَتَضْعَفِ إِرَادَةِ التَّوْبَةِ شَيْئًا فَشَيْئًا And from the, the most uh, scary or fearful effects of the sins is that it makes the heart weaker in loving good deeds and it makes it um, basically like easier for it to do sins. And the irada of khair, or the, the wanting or desire to do good deeds, becomes less and less, and it becomes harder and harder for a person to do good deeds. So this is one of the, he's, the Imam is saying, one of the most scary effects of the sinfulness. Like having that, losing the love of doing good deeds. And he said from the evil effects of sinfulness is is basically when one becomes accustomed to the uh, the sinfulness and he starts loving the sinfulness to the point where he will uh, min nafsihi nasi lahu wa la that he, he will like the sinfulness so much that he his nafs doesn't get upset anymore if people see him doing the sin or if people talk about him doing the sin and that's one of the greatest of evils like the Prophet said kullu ummati ma'afa illa al-mujahirina وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْإِجْهَارِ أَنْ يَسْتَرَ اللَّهُ الْعَبْدِ ثُمْ يَصْبَحْ فَيَفْتَحْ نَفْسُهُ وَيَقُولْ يَا فُلَانْ عَمَلْتُ يَوْمَ كَذَا وَكَذَا 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 فَتُهْلِكَ نَفْسُهُ وَقَدْ بَاتَ يَسْتَرُهُ رَبُّهُمْ So the Prophet said that all of my ummah are forgiven or covered except the ones who brag about their sinfulness. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set, uh, covered him, covered his sinfulness and then he goes and exposes himself. He tells, oh, hey, such and such, look what I did yesterday, bragging about the sin. And this is one of the signs that his heart is sealed because he's lost all shame from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even shame in front of the people. He doesn't care about doing the sinfulness in front of the other people. And he brags about it. And this subhanAllah has become, in our times, a sign of what you see around us every day on the TV. People bragging about sinning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking pleasure in it. You know, in school when you go to college or in other uh, professional uh, capacities, you hear people that don't have faith or, or, or are not practicing Islam as they should be practicing. They talk about the evil that they've done as if they're bragging about it and have no shame from in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the people. And this is a major punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to protect us. I think the iqama is now, inshallah. So I'll come back after salah if anybody has any questions or if you want to continue. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاكم الله خيرا